Hey folks, welcome to another TK Actions quick tip. In this one, I'm gonna show you a technique that I think I made up, but probably not. Anyway, I call it cloud sculpting. So it's been a while since my last video on YouTube. Uh, I've been crazy busy the last couple months. I was in uh, the Faroe Islands and Iceland with my buddies Rainer and Josh. And then when I got back, we launched the new Photo Cascadia website. And I made another trip with my friends Joseph and Paul and Zach Schnepp over to the Northern California coast in the Redwoods. And then I've been working on my images from those trips. So haven't had a ton of time to work on videos. This technique that I want to show you is a great way to add uh, drama and contour and dimension into clouds that, you know, maybe in real life had a lot of those qualities, but in the raw file come out a little, a little flat. And there's different ways you can add contrast and contour and dimension into clouds. Uh, but this way uses luminosity mass, luminosity selections, and gives you a lot of control in how you go about sculpting that dimension. So let's check it out. Okay, so here's one of the images that I took in the Faroe Islands, and it was really cloudy there uh, a lot of the time. And we had these wonderful cloudy skies, and this already has a lot of texture and dimension in these clouds, but I wanna bring out some more. Now, of course, I could just add contrast to the, uh, the clouds with maybe a curves adjustment or a levels, or even just a brightness contrast adjustment. But that doesn't give me the kind of control that I wanna have in sculpting and contouring these clouds. So I'm gonna do this with some luminosity selections and I'm gonna use dodging and burning techniques. So let me show you how to do that using the uh, TK Actions V6 panel here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and click the composite button to create the initial lights one mask. And actually I wanna start off by burning or darkening the areas of the clouds that are already dark. So now that I have that uh, initial mask or source set, I'm gonna come in and look at some darks series masks. Now the darks one mask is gonna target my burning to the darker areas of the clouds, but it's also going to bleed over into the lighter areas a little more than I want. So let me look at a darks two. Now this I think is going to allow me to darken those darkest areas of the clouds while really protecting those bright areas. So the next step is to load that luminosity mask as a selection. So I click the selection button there. Then I can go ahead and hide these marching ants because they are just really in the way and distracting. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click the burn action button here to create a burn layer. And that automatically sets my brush color to black. And so I'm ready to burn. Now I'm gonna start with the opacity at about 30% here. And I can just start making passes across the clouds. And because I have that luminosity selection active, that is targeting my burning just to those darker areas. So even though I'm overlapping into some of the lighter areas, my burning isn't going there, but the luminosity selection is keeping the feathering between the tones really smooth and perfect. So you can see that that, that contouring is starting to come in. I could go to a smaller brush if I really wanted to target in on some of these more specific areas. And I can just keep working that until I get the darks where I want them. And this is the part where you, know, you have to decide what's the, uh, the correct amount for what you want in the image. But once I've done that, I can go ahead and deselect that dark selection. And now I'm gonna come back and reload the uh, rapid mask down here, the loom lock channel and the rapid mask to reset it to those new tones that are in the image now. And now I'm gonna look at a, a light selection that will help me lighten or dodge the lighter areas and continue that creation of the uh, dimension and the sculpting. So that's a lights one. And again, I think this is gonna allow it to bleed a little too far into the darker parts. So let me look at a lights two. And I think that's the one. Lights three, probably gonna be a little too restrictive. So lights two, I'll load that as a selection. Just have a few marching ants there, but I'll go ahead and hide those. And now I'm gonna go ahead and generate a dodging layer right there. 
my brush color is the, the right white setting now. I'm gonna increase my brush size. I think I can leave it at that 30% opacity. And now I can just start clicking around into some of the lighter areas. But again, I don't have to worry about it going over into the dark areas and over lightening my dark areas. So there I've done some both darkening and lightening or dodging and burning to those clouds, but it's pixel for pixel with the tones in those clouds. So it's really helping create that dimension. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that selection. And next I'm gonna select both of those layers, the dodge and the burn layer, and just click on the group button here in the panel to put those together into a group, which I could call my uh, cloud sculpting, sculpt, there you go, spelled it right, <laughs> sculpting group. And that enables me to turn on and off that group all together. And you can really see what a great effect that's having on the, uh, the contour of those clouds. And maybe I wanna do some other dodging and burning, just kind of freehand in the landscape so that it more closely matches the mood and the light that's coming from those clouds. So this is not cloud sculpting, this is just a little extra to kind of finish the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a dodge layer. And let's bring this down to maybe 20%. And I'm just gonna click once right there on the, uh, the village to lighten that up and maybe go smaller with the brush and one more click right on there to create a little highlight on the village. And next, again, this is with no luminosity selection. These are just freehand dodging and burning. I'm gonna go ahead and create a burn layer and use that to now burn in some of this area out here and out here, kind of darken the edges and the corners and create more of a focus towards the middle. And I might also want to further darken all of the clouds up in the corners up here and at the top. And again, create kind of a, a vignette there. So let's take a look at the before and after now. So that's kind of the flatter image, just pretty straight out of the raw file. And that's after doing the cloud sculpting and then a little freehand dodging and burning down on the landscape. So that's the technique that I call cloud sculpting. I hope that's uh, informative and useful for you, something you can use in your workflow and also helps you uh, put the TK Actions panel to use using luminosity masks and selections and a lot of the other features that it has. If this is the first time you've watched one of my videos on YouTube, I'll mention that I have a lot of other tutorials like this on my YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe and click the notifications bell so that you get notified when new videos are available. And I also have complete video tutorial courses on my website and the link to that is in the description below. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.